that. Let's welcome Mary as she comes. You're all very quiet today. He's getting his retaliation in first before I say something. I wouldn't have said anything, dear. No. Anyway. Yes. Can anyone remember the two things we've already talked about? There's five things all together. Come on, who's been listening to Brian? Nobody? Okay. They all begin with A, submit. Thank you, Pauline. Yes, sub submit. What was the first one? Surrender. Thank you, yes. So we talked about surrendering to Jesus. We've talked about um, submitting, which is a different thing again. Sometimes you think the words are a bit the same, but they're not. And today we're going to talk about sacrifice. And I think it's apt in the light of some of the songs we sang this morning. Thank you for those songs about sacrifice. And you know, isn't it awful easy to sing about sacrificing to God? Much easier than doing it. I think anyway, don't know about the rest of you. Um, often when I sing it, I think, really, Mary? Do you think you do that? Um, so I hope that we don't just sing and not thinking about what we're, we're talking about or what we're singing about, but we actually think that it's part of our worship to God. We're going to look at a scripture today, which is one of my favorite scriptures. It's on sacrifice. It talks about our reasonable service. And we're going to talk, and it's Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Now, I'm going to look at it in two different versions, but this version I'm going to read to you first of all. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world. And we've talked about these sort of things already this morning. But be transformed by the renewing of our, your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There are lots of words in this today. And there are lots of words that sometimes, again, when we're singing, we say, sing them. When we say them out loud, we say them out loud. But we maybe don't think of the implication of those words. And the first word I'm going to look at this morning is mercy. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. What on earth is mercy? The dictionary says mercy is compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. By the mercies of God, by the forgiveness of God, by the compassion of God, we are here today. We know Jesus today. And we are set free, as we've sang about this morning, because of the mercies of God. Because he sent Jesus so that we could have this forgiveness in our hearts, so that we could have his compassion all over us because we deserve punishment. We deserve, we don't deserve what God has given to us. So that's the mercies of God. So I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, by the compassion of God, by the forgiveness that God has shown us, that you, you and I, present our bodies a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. What's that? sacrifice. Again, the dictionary says, an act of giving up something valued for the sake of something else regarded as more important or worthy. I have to ask you, Jesus sacrificed all for us. What are we sacrificing for him? I ask myself this. It's one of those verses, one of those scriptures I love to read, but every time I read it, it challenges me. What am I sacrificing Am I giving up anything on a daily basis? Am I giving up stuff now and again that means I'm giving it up because God has asked me to give it up? Or am I just living my life and coming to church and being just a person that does their own thing but has Jesus in our hearts and we're going to heaven and that's great? Or are we sacrificing? Now, sacrificing is not about lying down an altar and somebody cutting you up. That's not what we're talking about here. But it says sacrifice, it says 
present your body. So that doesn't mean it's like Abraham, that he went and he put Isaac on an altar and he was going to burn him or he was going to kill him. That's not the sort of sacrifice we're talking about. But our bodies, our bodies will respond to our spirits. Our bodies and our souls respond to the spirit within us. So it can either respond to the soulish, which is our mind and will and emotions. It can respond to our everyday thoughts that we have, or it can respond to our spirit. And I have to ask myself, is my body responding to the spirit of God and what he's saying to me? Or is it responding to everything that's going on around me? Is it responding to my likes and dislikes? Is it responding to the things that I want? Living sacrifice. Are we responding? Are we abandoning anything in our lives? Are we yielding to that sacrifice? Are we asking God on a daily basis? Or do we just get up on a Monday morning, we go through the week, and then we come to church on Sunday, and we sing the words and mean them, as far as coming out of our mouth is concerned, and we mean them in that sense, but are we doing anything else about it during the week? Or do we just run through life and not think about it? Because it says here to be conformed, I'm going forward a little bit, conformed to this world or transformed by the renewing of our minds. Part of that sacrifice is considering what God is saying to us individually, not doing what somebody else is doing. Oh, I, I haven't sacrificed enough because I'm not living the life that she lives. I'm not living the life that he lives. No. Go to God for yourself. What is he asking you to do for him? You know, we talk often in this church about your pl God's plan and purpose for us as individuals. And he has a plan and purpose. And it's not seeing somebody else doing something and thinking, I would like to do that. No, that's not what it's about. It's about saying, God, what is your plan and your purpose for me? And what have I to sacrifice? You see, it's great thing of having a plan and purpose. I know what God's plan is me for me. I know what God's purpose is for me. That's great. But I'll tell you something now. There's sacrifice in the purpose and plan of God. And if we are not wanting or living a, as a living sacrifice, if we're not daily saying to God or weekly or monthly, if we're not saying to God, what is it you want from me? If we're not getting our lives in line with all of those things, then the plan and purpose of God may not come to fruition in our lives. Why? Because we haven't sacrificed. And like I say, I don't mean about lying down and, oh, woe is me and I have to carry this heavy burden and I have to do what God wants me to do and I can't enjoy life. If you find God's plan and purpose for your life, he's made you specifically, you'll enjoy it. You will enjoy it. I tell you that, honestly. You will enjoy it. So you, live, you have your bodies a living sacrifice. And then it says here, holy and acceptable to God, not to us but it will be if we are living for him, which is our reasonable service. Reasonable. C would you say we're all reasonable people? Okay, Lindsay, you're not. Okay. <laughs> would you say you're reasonable? Let's see what reasonable is. Reasonable is rational, logic, realistic. You see, it's, it's about our reasonable service. It's about our rational service. It's about our realistic. You see, this sacrifice we have to make has to be realistic. It has to be realistic to us. This plan and purpose that God has for us has got to be realistic in our everyday life. Um, some of us, we think, you know, uh, Nigel has been called and he's going to India and he's gone back and forward there and he's staying out there for long periods of time. There's a sacrifice with that. Missionaries have a sacrifice to give. They go away from their families and friends at a certain age of their lives and they come back 50 years later and there is nobody. They don't know anybody. It's a lonely life. It's a lonely life. So that's a sacrifice. So we're not talking about sacrifice and being beaten and whipped and all that stuff. But we're talking about in our normal bodies, what is God saying to us to do? And a sacrifice to me might not be a sacrifice to you and vice versa. So we have to think about that. So it's that sacrifice. Is are we uh, our reasonable service? Is it a logical thing? And it's a logical thing in the light of His plan and His purpose for us. Our reasonable service is what God has specifically asked us to do that nobody else can do. 
God has specifically asked us to do. This next one here, this is good, our reasonable service. This was in the bottom of my Bible, and I just thought it was so interesting. Reasonable service, physical, in that our bodies are presented in worship. So here we are, God, we're here this morning. Here we are every day when we're waking up. Here we are, God, we are living, we are worshiping you. We are presenting our lives, we're presenting our beings, we're presenting our bodies. Work through me today, Lord. Work through me today. The rational, we talked about that as well, is that our reasoning, now this is good, now listen, think about this, is responsive to his truth. Not what somebody else has told you you should be doing. It, rational in that our reasoning, so is our reasoning in lining up with the word of God? Is our reasoning lining up with the will of God? You see, unless we know God, we are not going to have that reasoning and be responsive to his truth. We individually are responsible for what God is saying to us as individuals. Emotional, in that his mercies, and again we're thinking of mercies, and his compassion and his forgiveness, do we really understand in our emotions what God has done for us? Do we really understand what Jesus went through for you, for me? That we perceive, that we really get this, that we really, because we sing about it, we talk about it, we pray about it. Do we really get it in our minds every day? Do we understand in our emotions, in our minds, that his forgiveness is ours? And Brian said earlier this morning, our chains are set. We're, you know, he is, Jesus broke all the chains off us. But a lot of us are walking about with chains still on us. So maybe we haven't perceived the forgiveness of God. Maybe we haven't perceived in our emotions that the mercies that he has for us. And it says, and awaken our sensitivities to his loving kindness. Do we understand how much God loved us? Do we really get it? So what right have we not to forgive ourselves if God has already done it? Because half the problem with most of us is that we haven't forgiven ourselves. Now, Jesus has forgiven us. He's sent his mercies. He's, we need to perceive it. We need to understand that his loving kindness, all those things are done and dusted. So stop carrying it around with you. Stop bringing it into church every Sunday and taking it home again. Stop getting up every morning and just putting on the chains and walking about with them on. Stop it, stop it, stop it. We're not going to hear what God has for us if we're walking about with chains on us. It's like they're stuck in our ears or something. Spiritual. In that, this is all the fruit of his spirit, reviving and renewing our spirit. You see, unless we get rid of the chains and unless we get rid of those things, we are not really going to hear and be able to walk truly and alive in what God has for us. So our spirit is awakened when we come to Jesus. Our spirit is awakened, but we're not really going to get it all if we don't allow those chains to fall off. That's part of the sacrifice. Because sometimes we love a wee bit of, oh, you know, <laughs> but God, why, why me? Why this? Why that? You know, it's part of our um, personality and our character. Let's just carry this with us. You see that big hump I have on my back? You know, that's, that's, that's my burden. That's what I have to carry. No, it isn't. Stop it. Stop it, stop it. It is not your burden. Jesus took your burdens. Jesus took your sins. Jesus took our sicknesses. Let's make it a, a difference of that. Stop carrying it round. So, back to the first one again. Do not be conformed to this world. Let's stop trying to live our lives the way somebody else lives theirs. Let's stop matching up to what somebody else is doing. Let's stop doing the things it says to match up, to comply with, to follow, to observe, to abide by. Whose words are we abiding by? Whose words are we living in? Whose words are we taking on board and living our lives because of? Is it everybody around us? Is it the world? Because it's definitely not a good place to get your credibility from. 
I mean, it stinks. But so many of us want that accomplishment, that noticed, that we notice that God is doing this, or that, that, that the, uh, well, I have to be like that if I'm going to be the person I need to be, you know, to be getting a bit of authority and all that stuff. Don't be conformed to the world. It says, be transformed. Now, we've heard this often enough. How do we get transformed? By the renewing of our minds. This thing here carries it all. It carries all those things we talked about earlier. It carries all the stuff that's in our heads. And if we've been a Christian a long time, we've probably carried God's word there, but we've also carried all the other stuff. And if we haven't understood getting rid of the chains, getting rid of those things, it's all mixed up in the God stuff. And so we talk a lot of gobbledygook sometimes. And it's not God stuff at all. It's not God stuff. Let's hear what the word of God says. Do not be conformed to this world. Stop looking around you and thinking, I want to be like them. We're only supposed to look to Jesus. He is the author. He is the finisher. He is the beginning. He is the end. He is the alpha. He is the omega. He's everything we need in our lives. Be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Let's set ourselves a goal this week and everything we think about, let's ask, is it in the word or is it just something I've carried along in my wee chain here, you know? Did I start doing that? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, here's the good part about it. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If we're not transforming our minds and getting into the word and letting the word transform our minds, we are not going to know or be able to prove what that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is. And we'll go to everybody else and everything else and we'll try and figure it out, but we'll not really get it. And that's why most of us don't know the plan and purpose of God. We're looking in the wrong place, folks. We're looking in the wrong place. We need to look in the right place. Transform by the renewing of your mind. Renewing is saying about beginning again. Well, that's salvation. Our spirit is born again in a moment, but our minds start at that moment and work in a new path, or do they? Or do they? Or do we get so far and then that's as far as we want to go? Because it just seems a wee bit too awkward and you're going to stand out a wee bit more to the people around you in your workplace or wherever you're going because you're just, oh, you're going to be a wee bit odd. Then somebody might go, what's wrong with you? You don't do this. And then you maybe have to say, no, I'm a Christian. Or you might, oh, nothing, nothing. Maybe you just don't even let on. Or maybe you say, I'm a Christian. You think, oh, you're a woman, you're a man. Renew, born again, begin again, replace, recondition. Let's recondition our minds. We've got to do this, folks. We're not going to find out God's plan and purpose for our lives if we don't renew, recondition, and rebuild. Let's, okay, it's not all bad that has been in our minds before, but let's just assume that a whole lot of it might be. And if it's not in, in, on a par with the Word of God, throw it out. It's like those chains. We need to get rid of the chains. We need to get rid of the stuff that is not... In co uh, just doesn't coincide with the Word of God. It doesn't add up with the Word of God. Renovation, restro restoration, and it says a change of heart and life for the better. If we don't change our minds, then our hearts won't change and our life won't change. And I would guarantee if most of us, if we were talking individually today, we would say the battle, which Joyce Meyer has a book about, the battle is in our minds. It's in our minds. Sorry. So if we don't change our minds, we're not going to change our life. We're not going to change our heart. We really need to work on that one, changing our minds. Now, where was I? What's the next one there? Um, right. We're going back again now to the New Living Translation because there was some good words in it that maybe are more everyday stuff and we can listen to them. So, so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Give yourselves to God. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. The kind 
he will accept. The kind of sacrifice that God will accept. Now we need to know what sort of a sacrifice he will accept, don't we? When you think of what he has done for you, is this too much to ask? Our answer to that, and we're probably all saying, no. But is it? Are we? We're not. <laughs> you know, not right now today in the service, no. It's not too much to ask. But when we go to your workplace tomorrow, is it too much to ask? What, when you think of what he's done for you, and that's about that mercies of God, that's about that forgiveness, that's about his amazing compassion on us. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Now, that's easier said than done because we're living in the world. That is so much easier said than done. Let God, and here's the secret, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will know what God wants you to do. You see, we're not going to know what God wants us to do unless we change our mind, unless we change our thought life, unless we let God and his word transform us. We need to be holy. Holy is being set apart for God. And here was a nice one, reserved for God and his service. Isn't that a good one? We're reserved for God. If we're going to be holy, we're going to be reserved for God and his service. We want to be reserved for God and his service. I know that that's the will of every heart and every life that's in here. If you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, you want to live for him. We want to live that life. And I'm not going to go any further than that today. That's as far as we're going to go. But I'm just going to bring a prayer as the worship team come back to us now. And we're just going to, uh, if you go to the number five, that was, yes, sorry, Austin and Kate, we'll do that another time. They were a, they're a family that are coming to us and they've sacrificed. They're going to sacrifice everything that they know to come to us and be part of us as a family here. The prayer. I want us to pray this prayer this morning. I want us to just close our eyes. And mm -hmm. as we come to that last worship time, I'm just going to ask us to close our eyes. And I'm going to pray this prayer. Father, thank you for the blood of Jesus shed for me. I offer the whole of my life, body, soul, and spirit. I offer the whole of my life to you. I offer my body, I offer my mind. I offer my will, and I offer all my decisions. I offer my family, and I offer all my relationships. I offer my finances, and all that you have given to me. I offer my work, and I offer my service to you. In Jesus' name, I receive the protection that comes through the blood of the Lamb over my life. Amen. Let's worship God in spirit and in truth.